Hey guys, my name is Deb Mani and I'm from Aussie Mail. Welcome to our Chainmail tutorial channel. Hey guys, big hi, hello, welcome. Glad to see you here. Thanks for popping in and spending some time with me today. So today guys, I'm going to be doing a weave demonstration. Now I'm not 100% sure of the pronunciation of this weave, so I do apologize in advance if it is pronounced incorrectly. But today I'm going to be demonstrating to you how to do the Hillet weave. All right guys, let's jump straight into it. Okay guys, so here's a sample piece of the Hillet weave that we'll be doing today. So coming up on the screen here on the side now are the ring sizes and I will also list these down in the description section for you as well. So uh, the ring sizes we've or I've chosen to use, uh, the big ring here in the center, that's 14 gauge AWG, 1.6 millimeter diameter wire, has a ring ID of 5 sixteenths of an inch or 7.94 millimeters. Then the rings here in the bright aluminium and here in the anodized aluminium. So these two rings here are the same size. They are 16 gauge AWG, 1.2 millimeter diameter wire with a ring ID of 9 30 seconds of an inch or 7.14 millimeters. And then the small bright aluminium rings here these ones are 20 gauge AWG 0.8 millimeter diameter wire with a ring ID of 3.75 millimeters. So I'm going today to show you how to do um, the unit. There's also a couple of ways of connecting it. So there's this way here where they sort of sheet into each other and then you could connect it this way here with just set, you know, create the unit separately and then join them. I've also done this one um, in showing you the different ways that you can use the anodized aluminium. So uh, the big ring can be anodized aluminium, any of those outside rings. So there's just a couple of combinations of ways that you can add to this weave. I've also done a couple of units here in um, bright aluminium and the ring in the middle is actually a square wire. Now I want to do a little bit more work with square wire in this weave but um, I'll link, I'll list uh, any of the ring sizes down below for ones that have used the square wire in them but that's quite a nice little version as well. I want to see if I can incorporate a little bit more square wire into, into this unit. So today I'm going to show you how to make the unit and I'm going to show you how to connect it up this way where it sort of just is a continuous chain rather than just uh, connecting the individual units together. Okay, so to start this weave, um, pre-close six of the 20 gauge rings, the 3.75 millimeter ID rings, and pop that on to uh, your largest ring, which is the 1.6 millimeter, 5 sixteenths of an inch ID ring, and pop them on to your ring and close that up. And then to do the same pattern as I have here, we want to grab in the 9 30 seconds rings the anodized ones first, and we're going to pop that through two of our small rings and just do that all the way around your piece so that you've got three of these um, let's call them medium sized rings in place okay so your work should look like this and what we're going to do now we're going to flip this ring that we've just placed over like that towards the back separate out those small rings and then just pull our ring up so that it sits like this and we want to do that with two of our rings so just repeat the same flip them towards the back of your work and then pull them up Okay, so then we want to take up a 9.30 seconds, but this time in bright aluminium, and 
and we want to slip that ring in between our center ring and this anodized ring here that's already in place. We want to go all the way around and come out so that it encircles our small rings that are in the weave. Okay, so that just goes through there all the way to the other side, out the other side, and then you just need to close that ring up. Okay, so your work should look like that at the moment. And we just want to do that same thing all the way around. So again, flip that ring to the back, separate out the small rings and pull your medium ring up so that it sits like this in your piece. Take up another bright aluminium ring and go through the same path. So in between those two rings all the way around, make sure you encircle that pair of small rings that are in there. Close it up. And then just place the last one. Okay, so going in between the rings. Make sure you don't go through those small rings that you encircle them. Okay. All right, and that's it. That's the unit. So you've got the choice now. I mean, you can make beautiful little earrings out of this. You could probably make a pendant if you like small pendants. You can make several of these and string them together like I have. But what I'll do is I'll make up another unit and show you how I um, joined these together in a continuous chain. So I'm just gonna set that one aside for the moment. And I'm going to do pretty much the same as I did. So opening up my 5 sixteenths of an inch ring, popping on the 3.75, so popping on the small ones, so that I've got six on there. Close it up. Then taking my anodized 930 seconds, I'll go through there. So all the way around until you've put three of those rings in place. Then taking that ring there, we want to flip it towards the back, separate our small rings out so there's one on each side, if you can see that, and then pull that ring up all the way up so it sits like this. Do that with the next one in your work. Flip it to the back, separate out those rings, give that large ring a tug. So just hold that in place while you grab your bright aluminium ring. And we go underneath, we go between those two rings all the way out the other side so that we encircle our small rings. And we close that up. And we do that all the way around. Fold that ring back, separate out the small rings so they go either side, pull that all the way up, and then lock it into place with the right aluminium ring. Now, I'm not going to put my third ring in place just yet. I'm going to pick up my um, unit that I prepared before, and I'm going to open up one of the lower layers in this case, one of the pink rings. Okay, I'm just gonna open that up slightly and then I'm going to feed it into here. Okay, close that up. So your work should look like this. And now I'm going to place that last bright aluminium ring. So to do that, I'm just going to go straight through there like I would normally. It's no difference, you've just got a little bit less play there, but not a great deal. And there you go. 
it's joined. So I just want to make note when you join them like this, there is a small amount of cupping in uh, the units. It sort of gives it, it's only a very small amount, but there is a small amount of cupping in the unit. Um, you can see this unit is, is quite easily forms a cup. Whereas the ones where I just joined the straight units, they're, they're flat. There's no cupping there whatsoever. Um, so you will get a small amount of cupping this way, but not a great deal. So anyway, guys, I hope that uh, was helpful to you. But that's your um, Hille unit. I think it's an absolutely beautiful unit. Little unit, uh, beautiful soft little flowers. You can get some lovely different effects with uh, different colour combinations in there. Uh, anyway, I hope you have a great time with it. All right, guys, well, that's it. That is the video tutorial today. I hope you enjoyed it and you've added yet another wonderful weave to your repertoire. If you did enjoy the video, give it the thumbs up, share, subscribe if you're not a subscriber already, leave comments or questions below the video. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos that we have on the channel here. And last but not least, guys, give our little shop link up here a bit of love. There you'll find all the bits and bobs and you know what's that you need to make a chainmail with. All right, guys, thanks again for popping in and I will catch up with you sometime in the very near future. Bye.